I do not. Oh, hi, Mark. Country road, take me home. Dread it, run from it. Destiny still arrives. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. All right, <laughs> here we go. What's going on, screwies? What's going on, drillbots? What's right. going on? Uh, uh, but what, we got a lot of weird names for our fans. How about Huey, Screwy, and Louie's? <laughs> we have three fans, so that's Huey, Louie, and Screwies. <laughs> yeah, we got three followers. <laughs> um, do we? I think we actually do. We do. Yeah, a little Dumb. bit of a self roast. All right, um, so I was speaking of roast i was roasting your guys's place on the beige but i actually love it you guys's place is dope we're excited about our new place um coming at you live super clean i mm-hmm. that's ooh, that's good podcasting super what? clean <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> super clean clap <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh what have you guys been watching any tv shows lately let's start with that because i haven't um i my girlfriend and i watch a couple of tv shows when we hang out um i mean we watch a couple of the funny funny ones or like serious as you say we watch a couple that aren't really worth talking about like my 600 pound life or like (laughs) (laughs) hoarders those are i mean they're 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 like the 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 popcorn version of tv crossover episode of my 600 pound life and hoarders oh yeah actually all of the people on 600 pound life are hoarders because they hoard food um, wow, and their and their bodies and their tummies, right? Um, but I was going to say we also um, watch Penny Dreadful. I wanted to start watching that. It's kind of like um like not Castlevania, um like old. Yeah, like, it's like Victorian England kind of with like Frankenstein and all the like werewolf and shit. Right, werewolf. That's his name, right? Werewolf. Yeah, werewolf man. Um, <laughs> d- uh, Doctor Mad Scientist creates a. Scary uh, Frank monster. Yep. <laughs> it called Frank Furter, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big hot dog, man. <laughs> Junkenstein. No, but the, I mean, the show's not bad in itself. It's kind of like... A little tongue-in-cheek tongue in with like the like gore and stuff. Or, uh, it's pretty... A lot of sex. There, yeah, it's, pretty, it's a pretty graphic show, actually. And there's like a lot of like... One of the characters, Vanessa Ives, who's uh, Eva Green, the girl with the big eyes... Oh yeah, yeah. The girl she, with the um, big eyes. <laughs> if there's one thing she's known for, it's her big eyes. What, what else does she have? <laughs> huh? What else? What else did you notice for? Um, killer personality. Yeah. Right. Um, her accent. Wow. Um, big old titties. But, <laughs> folks, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, th- I think. I mean, let's keep our heads head screwed <laughs> on. <laughs> well, doesn't get better than that. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think that my favorite element is um, kind of the story with Frankenstein. And then after that, it's like, it's pretty good. I mean, yeah. Josh Hartnett's in it. He plays just kind of like an American gunslinger, and he's basically playing Josh Hartnett, yeah. you know? Josh Hartnett is an American gunslinger. Josh Hartnett's oh. one of those guys yeah. that uh, seemed like he would blow up, and he just did like a Tom Cruise or something. Yeah. But I don't. Now re- Jeremy I, Renner's I, blowing up. Did you say he, you think that he would blow up? Yeah. yeah. Like in Lucky, Lucky Number Seven, did you ever watch that? Oh, I, was I gonna definitely say, watched I don't remember that. Who Josh Hartnett is? He's that's like, character in Lucky Number he's like he's, uh, twenty-eight days later. Weird squinty eyes. Um, he's in Sin City. He's not Asian. Uh, he's the guy. He's the guy he's that the, looks a little bit like Brad Pitt. He's the assassin. I guess kinda. A little bit like nah. Fight Club Brad Pitt. I feel like he had the nah. same haircut in Lucky Number Seven that Fight Club. I mean, Brad Pitt I had. I think I know where Evans going with that. He doesn't. I mean. I don't he's, think he's like there. a lot less. Back he's like, back he's like, so like Brad Pitt's like black coffee. Nice. If you had a bunch of cream, it's Josh <laughs> Hartnett. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, that, yeah, I wanted to see it. My sister said it was dope, but. I would say, you know, give it a whirl. It's not my favorite show, but there are some, I mean, there's a lot of good performances on it and I don't want to spoil it really because you haven't seen it, but right. basically, um, I mean, I guess Frankenstein is in the show, like Doctor Frankenstein. So you can guess that he's going to make a monster, right. right? Yeah. the 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 relationship between him and his monster is cool. My favorite. Oh, cool. Um, have you been watching anything? 
like nah, TV wise. You know, um, I mean, I watch Netflix, but I mostly have been watching uh, movies when I do watch something on Netflix. Not like TV, like cable. It's like, you know, well, obviously I don't have cable. I don't think anybody has cable. Yeah. Unless they're watching football. It's dying, dude. Well, yeah. I don't think people in our generation have cable. I think cable's dying out, like the landline. Yeah. 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 Netflix, Netflix is the new Netflix and like that's yeah. that's probably actually a good indicator. If you if you know if you know somebody that has cable, it's a good chance they probably have a home phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or you probably shouldn't, shouldn't be hanging out with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, to those of you that have cable or a home phone, we hey, thanks for listening. <laughs> We're not talking about you. All right, now here's where we input the AOL. <laughs> the dial-up noise. Yeah. <laughs> this should be our intro. Um, I haven't been watching anything. Zahara's been watching um, Handmaid's Tale. Oh, yeah, she yeah, fucking yeah. loves it. I've, I've heard, heard really good I'm things about like, that. Wa- I'm kind of watching a little bit here and there. Um, like I can, She has a TV set up where in the next room I can be playing video games and look over and see what's going on. <laughs> so whenever I just hear, what? Did you request that no. she do that? <laughs> you pause it. Wait, what? What, babe? What? Don't just scream. Okay. <laughs> what did, what's kind of like the basic synopsis? It's, it's basically, basically like, like semi, not post-apocalyptic. What's the word? I'm. Like? It's pre-apocalyptic. Total, totalitarian. Totalitarian. So, when it's like military is taken over and yeah. people are okay. Everything's right. militarized. There's, there's a, a. It's in the future in America, and there's a civil war going on, and women are basically like slaves, kind of. It's it's really miserable. Um, like women, women who can have kids are yeah. like, like handmaids, handmaids because. because Having kids is like it's kind of like children of men where nobody can have kids anymore. Mm-hmm. Right, guys, guys are, are infertile, and most women are. Um, so the few people that can, there's like a weird thing going on. I don't know. It's really a bummer show. It's one of those that's just like the first season. I would like poke my head in. Oh, okay, she's covered in shit and she's chained up, and oh, she's uh, getting hit. And, oh, it's a lot uh, of like weird rapey vibes to yeah. it too but it's all about women empowerment and like trying to overcome the misogyny and like the patriarchy yeah it's mm-hmm. it's a, not a fun watch but zahara is super into it so is it rewarding like not from what i've seen i mean there's there's like little uh, wins that they have like fuck yeah. the system i'm going to do this or i'm going to knit a sweater yeah, so I'm gonna do something, something I'm not allowed. And would you say and... that it's more like from what you've seen? It's more like the point is not to show off like a crazy government and like how it could control women. Is it more so like these showing these women and how they're they're facing like the adversity of the the yeah the totalitarianism? And so it's so I mean it's not necessarily it's like they're they're fighting a... them. It's like they're like just kind of rebelling yeah, yeah exactly. exactly it's a so lot of rebellion a lot of like secret kind of like with uh this bad comparison but like hunger games like there's this thing that's set up and then in the middle it's, and they it's all obviously from the outside it's like this is all <laughs> and then Sorry. katniss shows up and i was like how did they get the money <laughs> i didn't want to whistle to the mic so yeah. that's why i made that really weird noise <laughs> um but it's uh, so it seems like a bummer show. Whenever I see a, a show that takes place in the future like that as a time period, and the government's really fucked up and things are really crazy, I always think it'd be funny if, like, one of the last episodes they pan over to a calendar and it's like the year twenty twenty. Ooh, <laughs> it's right around the corner. <laughs> it's based off of a book, and I think that it's not very far into the future. Like, there's no yeah. like futuristic shit going on. Mm-hmm. So, especially with this. Um, like social climate. It, I, I wouldn't be surprised if. Well, I'm not surprised that it blew up the way it did. Yeah, because it's based off of a book. It's on I Netflix, don't know when. Right? Even, yeah, or no, it's on Hulu, which is odd. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> yeah, my my girlfriend, um, and I were. I mean, she's like has been telling me about it because she has Hulu, and she she was like, I mean, a lot of people are talking about this, you know, and it has um, oh um. Elizabeth Moss, right from Mad Men. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's she playing kills Peggy. It. 
and I'm sure it, she's a just she's a little great scenes. I've it's like God, this is ex- must be exhausting to yeah. be an actress in because she's always looking bummed, and it's always like a tight, tight close up shot on her face. And There's a I, I think also Alexis Blydell's in it, who's from like Gilmore Girls, and Lorelei. I think she did like or Rory, whatever. Rory, yeah. She kills it too. Not too bad, actually. Have you seen Gilmore Girls? <laughs> Brother, I, I grew up with it. Yeah, I'm an OG, man. You grew up with the Gilmore man, Girls? Man, Luke's my boy, dude. I'm an OG, I want to go to Luke's G-G. diner every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, my sisters and mom loved it. So I, it was one of those shows that oh. I would walk in. and That show was charmed for us. Uh, more than charmed. That, was, that show was Ghost charmed, Whisperer. Desperate Housewife, <laughs> uh, Ghost Whisperer. Not Desperate Housewives. It was the Wife Swap. We watched that too. Did you not watch? I watched Desperate Housewives. Uh, I think that was a you show, not an us show. Actually, yeah, I, I would just watch that by myself when when <laughs> nobody was around. She slept with the boy. These are my confessions. <laughs> All right. Um, that was a that was an interesting era of television when we were watching that because I think that was kind of around the writer strike because we were also kind of like watching Heroes and stuff. Ooh. Maybe Charmed was before that, but like yeah, I never got into yeah. Heroes. That seems like lost light. You're you're better off not having not getting the into it. first season of Heroes is pretty cool. That's what everybody says. They're all like first season of Heroes is cool, and then like the well the writer strike I think happened like season three or four, oh. so that they really don't have. A giant excuse, but <laughs> they had some interesting characters. It's just like the the tricky thing about a show like that is you think it's awesome in the beginning where it's like, oh, there are a ton of people that have superpowers, but then like you're always finding people with more superpowers, and wow. so it's I don't know. Yeah, they, yeah, they write, write themselves, themselves into a corner. Yeah. yeah, I like how you can track the writer strike by just reading the dialogue of <laughs> heroes. <laughs> oh, this is when it got real bad. I can change time. What? <laughs> there was a there was a ep- actually an episode though where there was a villain who was called the Puppet Master, and um, he like kind of psychically yeah. linked to people and could control them. And Evan and I, when we were in Disneyland, saw that actor. He was walking with his wife in Disneyland, and we were like both looking at him, yeah. and he was peeking at us too because he could tell that like we recognized him. <laughs> and it's almost like he was like, "What are they gonna do?" Oh, but God. we we didn't, but we didn't know his name, so yeah. we're not gonna like, "Hey, you're the guy from that one episode of Heroes," <laughs> right. because so he's probably that guy from. Yeah. An episode of everything, right. you know. We didn't know what to say, so we just kidnapped his kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If that guy's. Hey, uh, off, by the way, if you bang on the door again, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. You've seen, you've seen more movies than uh, I think the two of us have. So I think yeah, uh, I've you been through your your I've list. been killing it in the movie watching game. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, I've got. I, I'll just start with the. I'll, just talk about the one that really fucking pissed me off is mm-hmm. did you guys watch the Kingsman, the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like, did it? You like it? It's not bad. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I liked it as much as everybody a lot of people were like, this is fucking amazing. Right. It's, like, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Second, Second one, one fucking, fucking sucks. sucks. Does it? But it the problem is it's well made. Like the the action's like kinda like, like fun and cool. cool. There's like a lot of like weirdly a lot of CGI in the action, even though it's a bunch yeah. of just yeah. And for those of you who don't know what Kingsman is, it's basically James Bond meets Kick-Ass meets Spy Kids. <laughs> that's, um, a, that's, a good, that's a good description. <laughs> but only the floop aspect is Spy Kids. <laughs> the thumb men. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does give me like Kick-Ass vibes. Yeah, it's like, oh, we're going to... This is rated R, so we can. Eh. Wasn't like, it directed by the same guy that did Kick Ass? Did Matthew shit. Vaughn do both? Yeah, I don't know, but that would make a ton of sense. I would not be surprised. It probably was. Um, hmm. so they're both like based off of like hardcore, or not hardcore, but like graphic graphic novels. Yeah. Anyway, so the pro- the reason I fucking hate this movie is that it has the veneer of being like classy. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, manners make it man. <laughs> oh, we're that so. In the second one? Yeah. Yeah. And it's fucking, like, it's so trashy. Yeah. Right after they say something like manners make it man, which is. Hold on. Let me. Let's take a moment for douche chills. Douche chills. Matthew Vaughn did both. It is the same guy. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. 
fucking so douche chills all over my body when I hear anyone say manners make of man first off. And then in the same movie where they're like, oh, oh, you must always have your tie three inches above your belt and you must always be proper. Use the right spoons for. Mm -hmm. And then in the same movie, they're literally finger banging this chick (laughs) to put a tracker in her because they're spies. This is probably a spoiler, but it's in like the first hour. But I was just like, dude, this is... <laughs> Who gives a fuck? The movie sucks. Spoilers. I fucking hate that movie. This is this is probably a spoiler, but it's in the first half of the ending, so... <laughs> it, it's just so like... That's, yeah, that's... It made me think like whoever wrote this or whoever like came up with all this is a fucking f- nice guy, neckbeard fucking nerd. Yeah. He's like, all right, so this is going to be me, and, and his girlfriend's going to be super hot, but his friends are going to be like a little gangster, and uh, he's going to wear like a, a suit, but he's also going to be like... That's how I felt at the near the end of the first one, spoilers, I guess, when he rescues that princess, and, he's, and she's... Yeah. Or she's like, or what did she say? Basically, she's like, if you get me out, you can bone me in the ass, yeah. basically, yeah. and he gets her out and it's just like that whole that whole scene was really it's like like kind, kind of like uh like but like what you were like some guys like oh yeah like, like the guy uh, <laughs> yeah. like the, he wrote it just to see an artist draw it so he could take it home and look at it yeah, yeah exactly. exactly and that's, that's that, that one that's scene in the first one is all of the second movie it's i mean the action's it's boring action's boring fucking ugh. it's just so like trashy there goes our yeah. Kingsman sponsorship. And the problem, <laughs> <laughs> the problem with it is circle. that it's that like, like, if you're just being that way, if you're just ha- making like a trashy, like, oh yeah, whatever, finger banger to basically sexually assault her, which is, yeah. if you're making, you're making that, that, fine. Like, like, I'm not that sensitive. But when you put the fucking veneer of Colin Firth straightening his tie and and the main guy being all suave and then it's like there's like a veneer or like a fake yeah classiness about it that i fucking hated yeah i could see I was that. Like, that it does, pissed it me off it like offended me makes it makes it kind of trashy yeah Mo- yeah it's just, just fake. fake fucking fuck nerds that. writing <laughs> stupid shit fuck that movie well, it was based off of a comic book so. yeah anyway i hated that movie actually um, has anybody seen vikings the show no i want, I want to. to just from what you Wait, was that the one that you were watching? The guy? No, that that's like, fucking. Ugh, I don't even remember the name of that one. With Utred, son of Utred. Yeah. <laughs> that was. What? That, 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 that old okay. dude. It's just another. It's just McCoy another like. Utred. Sword clanging TV show that I watched. That's like a Game of Thrones filler that I'm waiting for the next season. Uh, the, the, that's kind of what I was hoping Vikings is. But since we've never, we all of us haven't seen it. Let's move on. Well, I mean, I want to see it. See it. Is it Me like, too. Is the action cool at least? Vikings? I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I thought no. I've only seen the clip on YouTube where the guy's about to get beheaded, and they're like, um, he whips his braid. They're like holding him by his hair because his hair's super long. And then when they bring down the axe, the guy like pulls his literally yeah whips his hair. He like pulls his head back so it pulls the guy that's holding his hair forward and the guy gets his hands chopped off and he's like ah and then everyone why like, would they do it from ha, that ha. way <laughs> why didn't they <laughs> they're vikings <laughs> that's it. yeah why didn't they do it like this too yeah how am I going to pillage <laughs> heave hove hargan <laughs> yeah wait so what were you waiting for the next season for like no 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 I'm saying like I I try to find shows that are just like very mildly similar to Game of Thrones to watch while I wait for Game of Thrones. Oh, to okay. that is. Yeah, I hear, I hear it's good. good. Yeah, I, I guess I could always try Rome. That's a pretty big one. Oh yeah, that was like 2005 or something. That's old <laughs> that's, school. That's old. You should old check out block. Legend of the Seeker. Yeah, Legend of the Seeker. Uh, by the way, this is a Legend of the Seeker cast now. Um, the last bring, out, bring out your Mord Sith. Uh, bring out your uh, uh, Dark and Raw. Your Dark and Raw. <laughs> your uh, fucking. Let's uh, let's stop that... with the niche references to old TV shows. What's the wizard's name? Huh? What's the wizard's name? Um, I remember. I don't remember his first name. I remember his last name. What's his last name? 
Zul Zerander. Zedekus Zul Zerander. Zedekus Zul Zerander. Folks, I'm lost <laughs> just as much as you are. Um, We're alienating our three audience members. <laughs> They're all like huge fans of the whatever the fuck you guys are talking about. Okay, um, I've got no screw inputs for uh, Kingsman, but it sounds like it's getting two screws down. One of the two screws yeah. way yeah. down, like sounds like it's stripped, stripped two, two stripped strip screws way too two deep into the wood screws. so that nothing's holding. <laughs> Fuck that movie, dude. Sounds like they screwed around too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they get burned. Um, all right, this is where I'll cut and then insert a funny uh screw pun. Um, in post. <laughs> all right, continue. Like, pre- pretend like I said something really funny. Oh, my god. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh god, this yeah. is screws. That was a good pun. All right, that's um, this, that's who we are now. <laughs> All right, so what do you, do you guys have any movies? We saw Disaster Artist. Gabe and I did. Oh, yeah. how was it? Was it like one of those comedy movies where everyone who's anyone in comedy shows up for like a <laughs> tiny role? A little. I mean, there's friends. There's like Apatow cast. Yeah, I would, I would say that it does have that kind of cast that you're saying, but I wouldn't even classify the movie as a comedy. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I was like, it didn't feel like no. super goofy like a... Um, uh, like a Seth Rogen movie, no. like it didn't, it didn't have like a comedy vibe. It felt like I felt well, they're like they're going it was for funny. jokes, like every like two. Yeah, minutes. yeah, exactly. Like there wasn't like let's write in a bunch of jokes. Yeah, so, like the humor came from like Tommy Wiseau is an interesting, funny I was, person. I was just about to and say they're that. They're portraying yeah. that as closely as possible, and that in itself, that's funny because Tommy Wiseau is kind of he's very he's a he's eccentric. a very larger than life character. You know, like he's yeah. And you can see in the movie kind of why that is, or like at least like. Is there the something ways... like wrong with him? There's got to be. Mentally? There's got to yeah. be. I think that Spectrum he's now? he's said something about like being in a car accident. Here's the thing about Tommy Wiseau, okay? Yeah. He's very secretive about his past. He will not, he does not give details. He's a lizard person? Don't fucking know. Be. I think he is. He's way too ripped to look, have a face like that. <laughs> have you seen like him in a tank top? No. He's like ripped. Is it? I don't yeah. know. I don't know if he is now, but like. No, yeah. I mean, in the movie, in the room, that's like, oh, shit. Tommy's been hitting the fucking whatever yeah. lifts. <laughs> Probably something weird. Whoever crossed Boulders. Yeah. <laughs> I pushed this boulder. No, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> James cool. Franco so does good? a really good job. Yeah. On the other side, Dave Franco. Is Dave Franco? Yeah. Like I'm not the biggest fan oh. of Dave Franco just because it seems like he kind of plays the same character, which works really well in a comedy situation. But in the Disaster Artist, I had a hard time. I only saw Dave Franco. Kind of like whereas, that handsome, handsome dummy, dummy guy, guy, or like naive. He, I guess, yeah. I mean, he. I think he mainly plays like. He usually plays like. Um, what would I? Anyway, back to you guys. Fucking, there goes that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel like Dave Franco just isn't a very good Dave Big Teeth Franco actor. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> roasting his. I mean, he's funny enough, but I just I don't know. He doesn't feel believable to me. He was. I mean, he was good in the movie, but it, it felt like a movie when you were watching him instead of. It felt like when I used to be in drama class and I was would watch kids do their presentations and I could tell that they were reading off a script. That's what it was like watching James Franco. It's like, I know that he's reading lines Dave right Franco. now. Huh? huh? Dave, Dave, Dave Franco. Yeah, like Dave, some Dave. people who aren't like naturally funny in a movie and it's like, oh, they're they're playing this funny right now. Yeah. Like, he um, just has a way of delivering some of his lines his that delivery. doesn't yeah. feel like... doesn't feel realistic. It doesn't feel like real acting yeah, it yeah. like evan said it feels like you're watching a kid on stage in high school albeit like one of the better kids yeah, yeah. right but it seems like you know it it's like when you're watching a high bit. school play and there's like yeah. yeah there's two kids that are pretty decent and then the other kids it's like hmm you know it's like we'll like they're, they're doing it, it feels but more like, they're not making me they're not um, pulling me in like someone went up to him and was like hey dude you should say this and he's like okay and then he says it and like all right perfect instead of like drawing the words from like a place of emotion or reaction right it feels like i don't know he's just putting on a face and stuff i guess in his defense though this is like probably 
one of his better roles for me. Like coming from somebody that's not a big fan of Dave Franco. I mean, besides, besides now you I see was, me and I, now you I, see I, me too. too. I, I, <laughs> you like those movies? Nope. <laughs> okay, I was, I was gonna say. I was I don't, joking. I don't wanna <laughs> Let's uh, let's make a magic, magic movie, movie, and instead of having people try to figure it out, let's just see. They just have superpowers. So. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Let's not come up with clever <laughs> tricks. Let's just they're fucking wizards from another dimension. I feel oh, like Jesse man. Eisenberg. That movie made me hate Jesse Eisenberg. Like, yeah. Sahara loved that movie, so she was like, "Hey, we're watching with me," and I was like, "This guy's in like when he's doing his magic trick, and then he becomes a f- fucking I don't know." Anything he turns into Yogsith off. <laughs> <laughs> He's an elder god. <laughs> this is an amorphous block. I thought that they would say a lot of, a lot, a lot of the like criticism uh, for the title of the movie because it's like the first one is now you see me and everyone's like oh the second one's gonna be now you don't because it's that's the other half. Oh right. But they did now you see me. Now you see me too. <laughs> Oh, oh god, god dude. dude it should have been called now you <laughs> this don't. time fucking they're not playing it. with a full deck <laughs> you know they should have called it now you see me too t-o-o like <laughs> and then added a character <laughs> now you see me <laughs> too <laughs> <laughs> they did add a new character did you guys see the second one no, no. oh what a <laughs> pile of shit <laughs> fucking oh god you know how woody harrelson is a character in it Dude, I fucking hate Woody Harrelson. I don't. I like him. His I final like him. trick, he slices his wrist with a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> See how it looks like I'm bleeding to death? Because I am. I mean, there's... Anyway, anyway real quick, Woody yeah, Harrelson. Ahead, ahead. It's revealed that he has a twin brother, and his twin brother has, like, a Jufro. And it's just Woody Harrelson playing both characters. <laughs> With just a fake ass wig. And like a like fake, like goofy, goofy accent, accent, even though they're brothers. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like Jack and Jill. <laughs> it's so bad. And then their new character is... I don't think <laughs> it's... Do they both sing Let's Get Together? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need to waste time with that. Anybody see the trailer on Netflix for the new Adam Sandler movie? Oh, the Chris Rock and him. Oh, I saw the yeah. trailer in theaters, which is really? weird. Yeah. What yeah. movie? Well, we went to go see Infinity War. Oh, did it air what? before? Yeah. yeah. You must I got there. Paying attention. Yeah. I was there. I must. I saw, well, I saw Chris Rock and Adam Sandler. It might be a different thing, but I don't think they got a lot going on. So. Top five, two. <laughs> Top fifty two. What do you want? Uh, what, what do you think about the Sester artist? Like final thoughts. Yeah, maybe. I really liked it. Yeah, I think yeah. that um, I really? hope that it's, I hope that it's accurate because I think that the, it's like, well, I mean, I know that they've obviously taken liberties because well, that's yeah. what all yeah. biopics do. But well, not only is it from Greg Cicero's point of view, but it's like they're interpreting his. Is that book. Mark? Uh, yeah. Oh, hi, Mark. That's they're hilarious. They're interpreting his book that he wrote, like based off his point of view. So there's probably a lot of liberties taken, but yeah, I feel because like, you. Like, it's yeah. um, I feel like it's an interesting companion to have to the movie The Room. It's like I feel like people, yeah, that are fans of The Room will really enjoy this. It's like buying like a collector's edition of a video game. It's do like, they, oh, it comes with all this information too. Do they kind of dump on Tommy? Like, do they make him out to be like a idiot? They, they present in the movie. They, I feel like they try to present Tommy as, as Tommy yeah, Wiseau. Yeah, yeah presents himself and possible. without oh. spoiling it there are people that dump on him because there are people that dump on him in real life right but i don't feel like they're lampooning tommy Wiseau. i feel like they're they're trying to accurately portray the kind of character he is do they go and for, the world around it reacts to it do they go for like sympathy like trying to draw sympathy towards tommy or is it just at some points yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. i totally get he's like a he's a character dude Anyone really who's that is. zany is he really, kind of. I mean, and he's <clears throat> he's one of those guys, you know. And a lot of not a lot of people do this nowadays, but he's one of those guys that, like, I feel like would um, would be very nurturing of tall tales about him. You know, yeah. would be like like if somebody had said like, "Oh, I heard you did this," but like, "Yeah, I did that." Yeah, <laughs> that's a true story. 
you know and it's like <laughs> he's he's just a really awesome <laughs> like he it seems like he'd be awesome to hang out with for an hour dude yeah. fuck but yeah. greg sestero is his best friend i would not want to be his best friend because i feel like i would be on edge all the time oh, he's a hard, like a hard ass yeah. no it's just that you just he's so unpredictable but oh, like weird. i feel like to run into him at a party would be dope i would love to talk to him yeah, yeah. um uh, on the topic just talking briefly about the room i was talking to gabe a little bit about this but it's you know it's objectively like a bad movie but when uh i was trying to think like if you break it down to what a movie is it's just basically entertainment and if it brings entertainment to so many people like even if it wasn't the intention to make them laugh if a lot of people enjoyed it in that way is it still technically a bad movie if it accomplished its goal of entertaining people right well, technically, I mean, you could just I, go. I think that. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no that's I, fine. I literally talked right over that's your. Fine. That's fine. Um, I was just gonna say I'll do it again. that I think. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say that I think that it can still be a a bad movie and still appeal to a white audience, just because technically, if you look at it from an objective filmmaker standpoint, it's a bad movie. There's, right, you know, right. the, the cinematography is weird. I mean, the camera is nice. You know, like it's it, like it a does soap have. Opera. It does have. It does feel kind of like a soap opera. Um, the performances are not very good. The direction is not very good. You know, it's just like you can tell that it's an amateur project. However, I think that you're my favorite it's, customer. It's, oh, hi, <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, think it I guess that is just a good, it's almost like a philosophical question yeah, in yeah, a way. A but I mean, I feel like it can't be, it's a bad movie that has merit because People did, like you said, find enjoyment out of it, and it's still being talked about and still being watched. I mean, it's a little bit endearing how much, you know, work he put into it, money he put into it. Um, right. And then, I mean, he's technically successful because of it, so. So I've seen the original um, uh, Room. Yeah. And I don't remember what is the Room. Like what is, Why is, is it, it called the room? Is it his, like, bedroom? Is it the room where he, where the movie ends? I've actually not seen the whole movie all the way through. I've just seen. I haven't seen any of the room. Of I just of I've clips. seen like some clips. Yeah, Do I've they, seen all the highlights. I really wanted to watch it, but by the time I by the time I got Maybe full wind of it, it was off of like Netflix. Or something. That's where he kills himself. Yeah, I didn't want to spoil. Oh, who cares? Spoiler Spoiler alert. Alert. <laughs> it is the greatest death scene in cinematic history. Darn me a bodily song. Yeah, I would say for Disaster Artist, definitely um, worth watching. If you're a fan of The Room, definitely should watch it. Definitely, definitely. So I'm Even if you're feeling a uh, <laughs> yeah. two screws up? <laughs> That's going to be... I think we should give it three screws up. Ring, ring, How many ring, screws ring. do we have to give? Three, there's three of us. Okay. I haven't seen it. Well, but Tanner gave oh, two screws up. But, but Tanner Fair. gave his movie two screws down. <laughs> so do we each. So it's one's a loose system. So much that he got two screws. <laughs> um, Dude, yeah, I took one of your guys' screws. Definitely and at least, it down. <laughs> at least three. Screws. Two out of three screws up. <laughs> yep. Go see Disaster Artist. Kind of like Roger Ebert. And hey, honestly. If you look at it like this, if you have at least two screws, you can hang something. <laughs> you can do that is with that one a, screw. Is that a dark joke? No, I was saying more like two. At least two screws could support something. <laughs> that's our that's our new slogan. Uh, I, I screw, definitely one screw, and it's gonna be like you know. I definitely went into the red right there. <laughs> so mark that. Um, yeah, yeah definitely def- good movie. Good movie. Cool. Should we? What time? What are we at? What's yours at? I'm at thirty three. Do you Talk guys want to talk about another movie or get into Do the river? Okay. Um, or which I don't know which order. Let's do. Um, let's talk about Wind River first, and we just we don't need to get into spoilers. Okay. We can talk about it vague enough. I mean, it's more, you know, or because you know. yeah. Infinity War, it's hard to talk about anything. Yeah. Without. Well, I feel like we should just do what we did with we'll the other movies and first half is non-spoiler, yeah. and then say spoilers, and then talk about. Yeah, but if we sandwich that, it's gonna be like. Right. You know what I mean. Fair point. So let's we can just talk about Wind River vaguely. All right, let's, let's talk about Wind River. Um, what did you guys think? I liked it. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. 
liked it a lot. I, I liked saw it, it but there's, I definitely have some problems with it. There's, um, without, That's his without, first without, movie that guy made. No way, really? I think it's the first movie that he directed. Directed, directed. yeah. yeah. Well, he, but he's yeah, written yeah. Sicario. He wrote Sicario, Hell or High Water. I really like Sicario and Hell or High Water. No, he's on a roll. Taylor Sheridan. Um, anyway, sorry. I, I liked know. Wind River. Um, I saw it in theaters. I will say, without giving too much away, it's kind of it's a very heavy movie. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> if you you could read just like what the movie's about and know that, and so it's like it was really. It's I don't I don't know if I like seeing really heavy movies like that out in public in the theater because it's like it I feel like it has more of an impact because the fucking screen's big the music's just in my ears and I'm like just I don't know it felt really overwhelming like I, I got out of the movie and I felt really drained and I was yeah like, and it was also like you know eleven o'clock at night but I was oh, like oh damn no oh, I felt um it's heavy I mean it's it's heavy no matter where you watch it but Right. <clears throat> There's a lot of shit that happens in the movie that it's like seeing it on the big screen. I was like, oh, I, I will can't say, wait. watching it on Netflix definitely blunt or uh, stopped the blow yeah. a little bit. Because there's, especially watching that one scene in the theater. Yeah. Holy fuck, dude. I, that was, that was it, wasn't it wasn't even, even it, was it was graphic, but it was just the way. There's a scene in the movie, not to get into spoilers, but. It's, you know, someone gets assaulted um, and it's not even super graphic, but just how they laid out that whole scene, yeah. how they took their time. And when you realize what's going yeah. on, it, it fucked with me so bad. I was like, this is more disturbing than a lot of the shit. And I like movies like that. I like movies that are that dark. Like Seven right. is one of my favorite movies of right. all time. And that movie is, and I like rewatching Seven. I love. I would rewatch Seven. I love Seven. I wouldn't rewatch, re-watch this, this movie. movie. And, and that, that scene, scene there's, there's a couple, couple of weird, weird or dark scenes, scenes like that. that. That was like I don't like that disturbed me more than Seven did. It was Just very how they filmed it. It, it sticks actually. with you, yeah. you know. And I think that it should. It should like without getting too much into it. I think that the way that he. The way that they decided to portray what they portrayed, I think yeah. it was done in such a way that it, it's it was, it was treated with. I, I I mean I hesitate to say it was treated with care, but I, I mean really it was. Um, just, like just like unbelievable, unbelievable realism, realism. Yeah. on all and the all actors, actors and all, all like, like yeah. yeah. I can tell you that I saw it in I saw it at IMAX? home. <laughs> no, I saw it at home. It did oh, not it, it did not soften the blow for me. Uh, yeah. But I think it's also because I watched it with my girlfriend Ooh. and it's it's a rough it it's a rough one i think to see in general it's a, also a rough one to see with like i don't know i mean it's just a loved it's a, one it's, i don't want to i don't want to talk about this like it's like the worst like the most graphic scene right. in yeah, movie history it's it's really a good movie and in my my personal opinion i'd rewatch it i mean i would watch it again i don't think it was but, graphic it was just it was so raw yeah and like it felt not close to home, but like I can see someone really getting, really getting fucked up over that scene. Yeah, yeah. Like in it, yeah. like fucking with them per- permanently. Um, but or it like sucks because I wish, I wish we could talk about it because uh, there's also something I also want to talk about that builds on that, the way that we can we can touch on spoilers. Yeah, like yeah, after, after Infinity War. Okay, um, sure. We'll do a spoiler zone. <laughs> the spoiler zone. Yeah, I yeah. Think, um, I'm really glad I went in with, to Wind River with no expectations, and I didn't watch the trailer because I had no idea what the yeah. movie was going about. I didn't know what to expect. You heard it was good though. I read. The, I did read like the just the number reviews. I didn't read writing reviews, but I just saw like the numbers, and I was like, "This movie's doing good numbers." Yeah. And I was like, you know, I I um I knew I wanted to see it because of Taylor Sheridan. <clears throat> yeah. I that, that's there's certain people that like. Like Alex Garland, the guy that did um, Ex Machina and um, Annihilation. Oh, right. Like he's one of those guys that's like, if he does a movie, I'm going to see For it. Sure. Same thing with Taylor Sheridan. Um, and so I, like, I knew I wanted to see it. And I, but I did the same thing that, you, that Evan did. I didn't um, watch the trailer because I wanted to go in fresh. But I 
You know what's funny? This is, but this doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just kind of a funny thing. I always think that I don't like Jeremy Renner for some reason, and then yeah. I watch him and I was like, "What's? Why don't I like him? <laughs> right. I think it's just I something like, about his face, I like squishy Jeremy face." Renner. I do not like Hawkeye. But I do like Jeremy. Renner. That could be it. I, I don't like his Hawkeye character, but he's. I a like good actor. after I saw Age of Ultron. I loved Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I actually haven't seen Age of Ultron. You haven't seen Age of Ultron? No, I'm way behind on Marvel. I movies. have even seen that. You, I've seen that. I saw it in the Walmart break room. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like break room, not break. That old? Room. It's twenty. Um, it's a couple years. Been a long time. I think it's 2014. Um, not that it matters, but, um, no, yeah, I think it's, uh, Jeremy Renner's squishy face. Um, <laughs> like, squishy face was good in, in Wonder Woman. Where, like, if he, you poked his forehead, it would, like, go to, like, the second knuckle. <laughs> he's, like, he's made out of clay. <laughs> yeah. He looks stop motion in that movie. Um, no, uh, I liked Wind River a lot. I fucking thought right. the whole thing was in Alaska until, like, halfway through. Uh, and then they said like Wisconsin or something. I'm like, oh my god! Like when the um, when the second character comes in, uh, Scarlet Witch. I don't right. Yeah, Elizabeth yeah. Olsen. Olsen. Yeah. yeah. When she comes in, she's like this hot shot FBI newbie, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and she's like, hey, I just flew in from Las Vegas, and I was like. She flew from Las Vegas to Alaska. Dude. What the fuck? Cut a red eye. <laughs> yeah, I, but then. An, I don't know why I thought that, but um, I, well, snow, <laughs> snow, Alaska. <laughs> There's snow in Alaska, <laughs> but um, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. I have one big problem with it, but what did did you say your thoughts on Wind River? Did you you like, you it. like it? I like it. The to to go into depth of why I like it, it would be to spoil okay. things. Okay. So um, but I I guess just my. Non spoiler review, I would recommend it. Two, two screws up. Um, screws, well, screws for me as well. The problem with. How many screws do we have? 16 screws <laughs> up. There we go. That's a full set of screws. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just save my problem with it till the end. The only problem I really had with it is at the beginning. At the beginning, I think. Yeah, they say it's based on a true story. And I always look that shit up if a movie mm-hmm. says that because, I mean, it never is. And basically the director said that it's based off of a number of uh, stories that are taken – that take place on reservations that go um, either undocumented so no one gets arrested for it or um, – <laughs> And oh, he also basically you said says, arrested. I thought you said roasted. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I guess. And he also says a bunch of stories that um, it's it's not a real story, but it could it could be a real story. Is basically like, it's I, a and I was like, That's you might lame. as well just not put it at yeah. the beginning. Like, if you want to dedicate it to like uh, you know victims of stuff that happens like that on reservations, like I think that's chill. But you don't have to say it's based on a true story. You could say it's like inspired by. True events, maybe I think would be a little bit more honest, but right. I don't know. Feels, I, feels a little deceiving. I do like. I yeah, I agree. I wish they would have taken that based out or based on a true story out of the yeah. beginning. But I really love the um, the PSA at the end, which yeah. is basically yeah. what the mm-hmm. movie is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's not really spoilers, but I just like that they gave like it went to black and it told you. What, yeah, it's like damn, that's a fucking with. Uh, Native American females and how they're marginalized and yeah. undocumented and when right. shit happens yeah. to them. Mm-hmm. Um, all shit. right. Um, oh, and I also loved how big of a part or how big of a role drugs and sex and the environment plays in the movie. Like how it's kind of turns men who work on this, like in an isolated place in this yeah. frozen hellhole, how it turns them into drunk drugged up animals basically that's because true, they dude. have no outlet that's except like um, to work i know it doesn't take place in alaska but in alaska it has like the highest like amount of just like assaults and like i don't know about murders but like rapes and stuff like that just because people i don't know what it is maybe they're pissed off because of snow maybe they're yeah bored. you live in a you can't go outside maybe they just There's feel like so they can get away women. with more shit since it's like it seems so. I think it's think more it's than more that. that. I, think I think it, it fucks, fucks with your head. 
Maybe. Because maybe it's the isolation. I don't think if they, they lived in a good environment, I don't think they would be doing the same thing. Like if yeah. they could get away with it. I think it's just to, like. Yeah. Okay. Getting into spoilers, so let's want to move on to the next. Let's move on to something more chipper. Let's talk about Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. Um, <I> can, uh, <laughs> let's bust this nut. <laughs> let's strip this screw, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, Infinity War. Infinity it's War. almost made a billion dollars. Yeah. In six days. It made its. It made more than its budget on I think opening night Jesus or like the next Christ. day. Something like and that. And the budget for it was astronomical. Like, like two hundred million, I think, it was something like that. And then I think that they made like three hundred million. Three hundred million. That's the next no, day. No. That's. GTA I mean, that's like how much it cost more than that. Oh, maybe I looked at it wrong. Let me look up. Let me get the real stats while you guys talk. You're probably right. You know, it's um, Avengers <coughs> movies are a big event. I remember when the first Avengers movie came out because that was like the first time that anyone yeah. had done this. A giant, that was huge that was crossover. Like, I was still in high school. I was like, junior, sophomore. Um, but yeah, I think it was that movie did very well. That was that was exciting. And that like it's an event movie. It's kind of yeah. like uh, Force Awakens or something. Mm-hmm. Going to see it was cool. Um, Infinity War, I feel like kind of the same, but it's just got such um, it's it's got a different tone. I feel like than the Avengers. It doesn't and, feel like really any Marvel movie that I've seen, Infinity War. Well, it felt like like four Marvel movies. Yeah. It yeah. felt Guardians of the Galaxy, and then it felt like whenever it cut to the Guardians, it was like, oh, this is like basically filmed by James Gunn. It felt like exactly like one of those movies. Yeah, it's kind of cool when they would have yeah. different characters introduced. It would be in the tone of the movie. That yeah, like in, when they're like, all singing. And... Guardians of the Galaxy. That was cool how they did that. You know, it almost felt like a Game of Thrones episode with how they shot the different stories and then like tied them in. And different characters are off doing this. These guys are over here yeah. doing this. And, and they all got a decent forth. amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Like they all got at least probably an hour half hour they definitely did a good job with that amount of uh of characters of trying to make sure everybody got a little bit of uh yeah the story yeah i honestly don't think it could have been done better because that's mm-hmm. such a difficult like if you saw justice league i think i talked about it on the last cast where i was like it was fine yeah yeah they had like a fraction of the characters and it yeah. felt like a fucking felt like such a mess oh, disaster totally just blew that out just real quick, just to fix my numbers because I was off. Um, their budget for Infinity War was estimated around three hundred to four hundred million, which is insane. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And um, infin- uh, Infinity, um, IMDb, Infinity budget. <laughs> it cost them two Infinity stones. <laughs> IMDb has their opening night listed. Opening weekend was 257 million, so they made like almost, almost, almost budget time. opening weekend. Wow! And it looks like as of May, no, that can't be right because it says as of May second that it's 322 million. But the last I heard was it was almost one billion. In right. Gross. Right. Yeah. But I guess maybe this is gross. Oh, gross in USA, so it's like overseas they're making. Right. right. I I don't even know if it's open in China yet. It probably has. But China's gonna blow that shit up. Yeah, China loves their fucking superhero Western movies. culture and stuff like that. Yeah, well, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah Star Wars. They just like big movies. I think superhero s. There's just so many. It's so weird to see a movie with so many bankable stars. Mm-hmm. Literally, Literally every, every character, character is, is someone. Yeah. someone. Yeah, like Ocean's Eleven times three. <laughs> Ocean's like thirty four. <laughs> I guess it's probably, it's probably filmed like Game of Thrones is in terms of like there are certain groups working right, with right. each other until they meet up. Obviously. Yeah, but um, those fucking those brothers have been hitting it out of the park. Hmm. They've been like every single Marvel movie, and I'm not a huge Marvel fan, but I can, I can get into it. it. Like I'm not I'm dead, dead to it yet. yet. Yeah, like, there's definitely a fucking saturation. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, I think everyone can agree that, even I'm if a you're Marvel a fan. fan but but as this a movies is, fan, I don't but, like just the. Well, we don't have to touch on that. But it's like the Assassin's Creed output of once a year we do a new thing, and it's not really that different. 
I think that you're right. I mean, your word is perfect. Saturation is exactly what it's like. But this felt more... I didn't feel like... With Black Panther, because I saw it in theater, I was a little like... Um, I don't, okay, one, I don't know why everyone fucking loves that movie. It was fun, but it felt just like other... Yeah. I mean, we talked about, about this last time. There's like a like definitely a cultural re- relevance to it, but it felt pretty much the same quality as the other ones. Yeah. Like, but this one, it felt I liked it a lot more because it felt like um, it again, it felt like an event movie. Like, yeah. And they were pretty ballsy with what they did, you know, in story wise. Um, Thanos was Definitely. a fucking baller. Thanos is dope. Thanos like, I don't dope. Than- Thanos. Um, I don't remember any villain that I honestly, in general, like I don't remember villains from these movies at all. But he felt yeah. it felt like his movie almost, like he got I more remember, screen time. I remember there. certain movie villains, like I liked Obadiah Stane in the first Iron Man movie. That's um, Jeff oh, Bridges, the dude who was basically yeah, the dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just well, that's just like your opinion, Tony. <laughs> I just yeah, I think I, can, I do not have a Jeff Bridges. Him- <laughs> It makes him more memorable that it tried to show you his point of view, give a little bit of his backstory, and go into his mind and his thinking. Um, and kind he was of cool. Like, yeah, he is cool. Which is what you should do with your villain. I feel like yeah. if you don't have a sympathetic villain, then you have a comic book villain, so to well, speak. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have you have a, a, a one note, two dimensional villain. It's like um, Sandman and Spider-Man, Spider-Man Three. It's like the best part of that movie. Right. Sandman is yeah. He's wasted he's on that movie. Yeah. And the, the actor was really good, too. Like Hayden, No, Hayden. For a second, no, I was like, interpreted what you said as, like, he was drunk. And I was like, he's wasted? He was fucking, he was trashed <laughs> every day. Who's up on the sand, man? <laughs> no, but yeah, you know, it's like, you should be, I feel, I like, if you, I feel like if you have a perfectly written villain, mm-hmm. you should be able to guiltily be rooting him on. Maybe even not even guiltily. I Just was like, not be, g- feeling yeah, guilty at all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get him not getting into spoilers. But. Not yet. Holy but shit! When he was telling his plan, I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, okay." Yeah, I'm surprised everyone's just like, wrong "Oh, with that. all right." And they just hand yeah. over the fucking stones. Like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I like Thanos a lot. I, I like when they have, especially in comic book movies, when they have villains that aren't too much. It's like I do bad because I'm a bad guy. It's like I've yeah. always found those kind of villains more interesting that are you can relate with them. It is in my nature to be like, evil. Like what? Um, I smash. Ant, an Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, was it yeah. Corey? Corey Stoll, the actor, the guy from uh, Peter Russo from Peter House of Cards. Cards. Good actor. Wait, Ant Man. An Ant Man. Well, not the Ant Man. He's the enemy of Ant Man. Oh. Yeah, but I was gonna say as He's an enemy, he was Ant really Eater. dumb. <laughs> Basically, he was just like, Come here, Ant Man. I want it for myself. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I'm evil and I'm greedy. It's like, all right, yeah. that's boring. It's like one of my favorite villains uh, in Batman. I don't know that he's had a, a good uh, representation in Batman movies uh, historically, but Mr. Freeze. Oh. Yeah. He's time for me. Chill. He, yeah, if, if he was done correctly, Mr. Freeze is a sympathetic villain. He is, yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's someone with his wife or something. Yeah. yeah. I've I played the games and he's like a cool villain in that. The Arkham. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's great in those games. Almost better than, well, definitely better than any on screen interpretation. Yeah, Thanos, it's interesting because he does a lot of bad stuff to people in the movie, obviously, but he's also just like so likable. And, and cool. he's so like composed. Yeah. Like Josh Brolin nailed yeah. it. He didn't look weird as a giant, like, no. Shrek, giant purple Shrek. Yeah. Like with a weird chin. Like, he, I thought the CGI looked great. Yeah, it looked pretty good, especially, especially fucking better than it. Kind of reminded me. Of, it kind of reminded me of the of the orcs in the Warcraft movie. Oh which yeah, was also which are the pretty, best part of that movie. Oh yeah, and the, they because they put a lot of time into that because they wanted the orcs to be believable. You know, because they're like they're, if they if they're huge, cartoony, yeah. nobody's gonna be sympathized with. Nobody's gonna relate to these orcs. Yeah, Thanos did not feel cartoony. Yeah, and then um. Shit, I almost just got into spoiler territory. Um, anything? I'm trying to think of something to talk about that it's is not spoiler. I would say that it's definitely the best Avenger movie. Yeah, it's um, the best of the three. What yeah. about the Marvel universe? I mean, it's 
it's definitely my favorite Marvel movie. I don't know if it's like the best Marvel movie. It doesn't. I'd feel, say it's definitely it's like, in the top three. It's hard for me because, without spoiling too much, obviously there's going to be like a second part to it. Right. It's not right. over. So it's almost like watching like Deathly Hollows Part One. Like, I, I have to see what the second part is to be able to say. And I would say collectively, like if Deathly Hollows was my favorite Harry Potter movie, I would say it would be the both of them. Like not Part mm. One or Part Two. So after I see That's the fair. second part, I want to judge it collectively. But I think it might be, um, because I like yeah, movies. yeah. I liked Guardian. I'm trying to think of like my favorite, and I liked yeah. Guardians, the first one. Second one was like dumb and weird. They went too weird. <laughs> um, I like the first one or first Guardians, first Captain America, and the first Iron Man. But other than that, I can't really. So if I'm judging it, and Age of Ultron, I liked way more than the first Avengers. Um, which is hot take, folks. Write it down. <laughs> um, so if those are what I'm working with right now, it's yeah. definitely Infinity War. It just yeah. And Iron Man one is really good. I like it. like I that mean, was that, my that standard was for a long time. Yeah. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. I know that's like kind of what kickstarted it, but I just it's really good. And um, it's weird, it's weird to, think to think that that movie that came out ten years ago. ago. That was that's the first the movie I saw in IMAX. Wow. Which is weird. I still haven't seen a movie in IMAX. You you haven't seen what? I haven't seen any movie in IMAX. Can't say that on a movie podcast, dude. Are you joking? No. Wow. Now we gotta screw you off. Honestly. (laughs) 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 What's the timestamp on this? Time to get drilled, (laughs) man. Wow, that's really surprising. It's. I don't even know what it looks like. Honestly, it's very indulgent. I'll just say that. Is it? Um. I don't. I have, well before I didn't do it because I would not. I could not justify the ticket price. But it's fucking now, expensive. Um, I haven't done it just because I haven't got around to it. Yeah. But did you put your mic there? There. Um. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Um, I saw it at the yeah first. Um, IMAX movie. So. There's like it doesn't feel like I have a connection like I grew up with these movies, yeah. but I kind of did. Yeah, I don't have a connection to it, but I definitely grew up. It feels weird with... thinking about a time before there was a Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? And they were pumping out Marvel movies. I mean, bef- they did have uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Ooh, my man! Oh, dude, if that count, if that counts as Marvel movie. Is that the, fir- the, the, the second, second one. one. Well, it's not. Oh. I guess I, I, the reason I forget about it is because it's not part of like the Disney Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. Right. But I think that yeah, Spider Man one and two. It, I like those more than Infinity War. As much as I like Infinity War, well, maybe I'd have to go back and rewatch them because I could also be second Spider Man is Rose dope Tinted. as fuck. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I thought like it was Doctor Octagon. It could be could... Spider Man <laughs> one and two. Are it's it's like tied. I guess fucking sick for different reasons. Yeah, I yeah, love I the love second Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Should we roll into specifics? Go into the spoiler zone. Should we go into te- the the spoiler zone? Do the intro zone? for the spoiler zone, dude. All right, All right go. go. Now we're going to spoil it. <laughs> now we're going to spoil it. Don't listen to yeah. this part if you haven't seen the movie. Gabe snapping is foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you turned it off. Um. All right. All right. Spoilers for Infinity War. Holy fuck. I'm so glad Spider-Man's dead. Ballin', ballin', ballin'. I'm leaving. That honestly was the only death that like felt hard because he's the only one that reacted to it. Yeah, everyone else is like... I was hard when I saw him. Was this? Yeah, everybody else is like, hmm, weird. And Spider-Man's like, dude, I don't want to fucking die. Also, um, his spidey his senses were going on. So I, I, I'm trying to think of this linear, like in a linear progression. I really liked how Thanos is strong, but when you see him fight the Hulk... I liked seeing the the contrast between Hulk with brute strength oh, and right. Thanos knowing how to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Thanos was like fucking like he when he hit him in the throat, you know, like when he was like blocking his like I watched that and it's like, you know, as much as I hate admitting it because I feel like it's like 
not what a sophisticated movie goer would primitive. say. Yeah. yeah, it's a little primitive. Like part of me was just like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that shit was badass. Yeah, yeah. That, well, yeah. That, that's how I like movies like that's why I love Hulk, dude. That's some uh, yeah. that's one of my favorite parts of the movies when they fight. I was like, yeah, get him. I thought Slot that was gonna, gonna be like a huge thing, and yeah. then literally in the first five minutes, it's like, oh, okay, I guess. I guess we're seeing this, and he just got his ass whooped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because like it looks like the Hulk is a little bit stronger, and the thing about the Hulk is that he gets stronger the more mad he gets. Right. So right. technically, Hulk could overpower him, but it's just like when you see Thanos first starting to move his arms, you're like, okay, so Thanos is pretty match, and then he fucking busts out actual <laughs> like martial arts, yeah. basically. That's you know, I it's like, like why he won. Because like Hulk versus Abomination, they're both just kind of mindless. They're creatures. Strength. Yeah. Beast, they're hulks. But Thanos is like with the combat knowledge. GG, I, buddy. I, I will say that I did not expect the movie. I didn't. I mean, I really thought that they were going to be like good guys win, you know. And then not. Well, I'm not yeah, saying like really you were saying it's not over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and they will. You didn't realize it was going to go as far as it was. Ba- that movie from the beginning was just Thanos moving in a straight line. Kicking ass, taking names the entire time. And then yeah, he wins. <laughs> it's funny. I was taking a pee that day before I went to go see it, and I was just thinking about movies where the bad guy wins. And I was trying to come up with movies where the bad guy wins, and I was like, "There's really not a whole lot." And then that movie basically fucking wins, dude. That's a Thanos story. And then at the end, he's just like yeah. chilling. He's like, opens up a beer. He's like, "Yeah, no." I fucking Close love that. Dude. that he dude, just that, that ending was so fucking cool. <laughs> Have you seen oh, from the? Shit. I know you guys are comic book guys. Have you seen that strip of the comic book where he's like no. becomes a farmer after he snaps? No, that's part of like the comics. Like he lives on a farm, and it's like he's I'm like just becomes a farmer. farmer he's like yeah, and I'm just like he's still wearing all of his armor. No, he puts his armor on as a scarecrow. Like his armor is like on like a stuffed scarecrow. Yeah, cool. It's fun. and he's just like in his whatever his. Right. Primal, primal outfit, outfit. Yeah, which is so fucking cool the, i loved the ending of this movie i think it's really um it's kind of bold of them considering what their main audience is like to have an ending like that you know because a yeah. lot of people are not going to stomach that you know if, especially if they're used to like the marvel norm of like good guys win bad guys lose a lot of people probably walk out like a lot of little fuck kids that? Yeah. little kids yeah. Yeah. yeah i saw a post on reddit and it was took this little guy to see infinity war he wasn't very happy and it's like this little 10 year old kid in an all-out spider-man outfit <gasps> with spider-man <laughs> face paint and he's just like in tears <laughs> that's fucking wild that's so fucking metal but um but then again you think you know that kid was fist pumping when whenever spider-man did something cool because he yeah. did a ton of cool shit with his yeah, spider, his spidey waves, legs. His legs. Um, They've also pretty much assured ticket sales for the next movie from all the people that paid to see this movie. I mean, if people weren't too yeah, because people want to see the redemption. Well, yeah, they want. They to probably see don't even movie. need to drop any promotion. Just like yeah. a poster. I hope they don't. The poster they just has the release date and it says next Avengers. See there, buddy. Josh Brolin has a really. I feel like Josh Brolin was a good choice for this. Me too. You know, he fucking because, nailed it. You know what's what's kind of cool about Josh Brolin is that a lot of times when you have a character playing an imposing character, it's because they have an imposing voice. Yeah. yeah. But Josh Brolin has a pretty imposing voice, and he's a pretty imposing guy in real life. Yeah. Like yeah. he's pretty tall. Um, We've all seen right Jones. now, <laughs> since he's he's play- <laughs> since he's playing Cable, he's Jack. Right. You know, and so it's like, yeah. and he's got that big. Face that makes he does have a big fucking head. Yeah. He's got like a big liney purple chin. Eggs in real life, yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they actually had to uh, drag the corner of his face and make it smaller. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ran out of breath. <laughs> he was just so like he was very collected most of the time too. Yeah, like it's like he was a very um, composed. You could yeah, he's very. You could tell that he's a character that has gotten very used to being the most powerful person in the room. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, you can kind of see it when he's, when he's being overpowered, like how he freaks out about it. But you know, know, like like halfway through the movie or no, 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 actually like a couple minutes in, because we see him with all of his henchmen. I turned to Zahara and I was like, this is just like the ending of one punch man. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This isn't spoilers for One Punch Man, but basically they get 
more and more intense, the yeah. enemies. And the final enemy in the first season of One Punch Man is just like Thanos yeah. and his buddies. Yeah. Like the universe conquering. Yeah. And they, there's one guy who's telekinetic and there's one guy who's like brute strength. Right. I really like Thanos' his, his crew. Like the, the psychic guy. I don't I can't be fucked to remember Squidward. his name. Squidward. Squidward. I don't remember. I don't read Doctor Strange. I don't know any of his enemies at all. Any but, but oh, is he's a Doctor Strange villain. Oh, uh, okay. He's fucking. He was sick, dude. The psychic fights, like the psychic stuff, was Doctor cool, right? Strange shit. I don't think Marvel has done a lot Ooh. of psychic stuff because I think that a lot of the psychics are mutants. Yeah. yeah. So we haven't seen a lot of psychic so stuff. So in Marvel. When he makes the portal with all the needles and they shoots. Yeah. That first fight scene was really cool. I was like, I I'm down. It. I, I really like Doctor Strange in the in the movies. He he was so much cooler. Like I didn't yeah, like the movie fucking... that much. <laughs> I didn't like the Doctor Strange movie that much. I felt so I didn't see it because I didn't think it looked very good. It, it was whatever. Yeah. But Sorry. he was so cool. Fuck, I'm gonna move that up. He was so cool in this movie, especially that final fight scene with him and Th- Thanos where yeah. he like makes those like things turn into butterflies and he yeah. does, does the, the thing, thing from the comic, comic books where he has all those arms oh, yeah. and turns I was like, this is really cool. I like and then each attack that Doctor Strange did, a different stone would light up mm-hmm. to combat to combat, combat, it. combat it. Yeah. Yeah. It was sick. That was, that dope. was dope. Psychic guy I really liked. I mean he was interesting. The guy I don't know who plays him. Do you know who the actor is? I like his voice. voice. He sounded familiar. Yeah. Um. And then there's Big Hammer guy. I was like, yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh, you know what I want to say that I already told Gabe about this. I'm fucking sick of fucking how kick ass Black Widow is. Like, you want to yeah. tell me these two fucking goons show up to fuck Scarlet Witch and the Vision? And both Scarlet Witch and the Vision get their ass kicked. And then Black Widow, who is a human, by the way, she right. has no superpowers. She doesn't even have the super soldier theorem. She comes up and fucking 1v2s these guys and stabs one of them. It's like, what? Oh, at oh, the, like the introduction of Captain America. Yeah, when she walks yeah. in, she's like, just fucks him up and stabs the guy. And the guy's like, oh, shit, I got fucked. It's like, okay. And the Vision and the Scarlet Witch couldn't handle this guy? Give me a break. Dude, dude. they nerfed Vision so hard. Yeah. Like, you didn't see Age of Ultron, but he's basically like OP as fuck in it. Mm-hmm. Like he's a god, basically. He's the one who killed well maybe him. <laughs> but Tom, uh, Tom, huh? Tom Von Lawler plays him. What is he? Tom Von Lawler. Uh, he's in Peaky Blinders. Uh the Oh Uncle yeah. Trader. He's on the he's cover, on the cover of, of Peaky Blinders, Blinders, the guy who's like, like making that face mm-hmm. on the Netflix cover. Not not Kieran. Or Killian not Murphy. Uh, no, no. Kelly Murphy. The guy who's yeah, like... like <laughs> you what, mate? Yeah. You watch me show, then. Pretty much. Um, yeah, that shit pisses me off, though. Like, I'm all for, like, kick-ass women and, like... But it just yeah, takes me out of it. That's it's, unrealistic. It's, Come on. Yeah, I mean, if she can she can kick ass against a human... Yeah, you know, I'm but already, she's, like, suspending like you're saying, my disbelief she's, yeah. when she's fighting, like, a group of, like, six, five thugs that have 200 pounds on her and she just downs all of them without even a scratch. Like okay, whatever. It's a it's a superhero movie. I'll suspend my disbelief for but that. She's oh, not she's a fighting superhero. like superhumans, yeah. and she's just holding her own like it's nothing, and stabs one of them. She's like, "Who's next?" It's like, dude, <laughs> give me a fucking break. Come on. I did like the introduction of Captain America though. Yeah, that was cool. Chris Evans. Is, like what slow. a hunk. So I guess Red Skull wasn't what? Hugo Weaving. Wasn't Hugo Weaving? Yeah, I heard. Do you that know who too. it was? No. no. Ross Marquand, the impression guy, the Ross guy who plays the Marquand? gay guy on Walking Dead, doing an impression of Hugo Weaving. Whoa! Weaver. No, no way. way! Damn, dude, good for him, dude. He fucking nailed it. He blew up. He started on YouTube before they even showed the that it was Red Skull. It did sound like him. I was like, that's fucking Hugo Weaving. So, and then he does the thing, and I was like, it is Hugo I Weaving. I mean, he does do impressions. For a living, so is that kind of fucked though? Because Red Probably Skull did kind of look. Even, dude. Would have been another hundo million. Because, like, does that does is that kind of like similar to the whole Crispin Glover situation in Back to the Future? What's the Crispin? Would you think? Well, because Crispin Glover wasn't in Back to the Future too, and so they used a guy that made him, and they made him look like Crispin Glover, and Crispin Glover's like 
hello. And so Crispin Glover sued because he's like, this is my face that you're using and you didn't give me any money. Uh, they, you didn't give and, me any credit. They CGI'd to make it look like him? They did like makeup and stuff to make it look like Crispin Glover. Huh. And he's like, what am I? Like, he's like, I mean, I know it's, it, I mean, I know it's unorthodox, but as an actor, my visage is part of my commodity. It's like, other, he's like, if we, if we're cool with this, who's to say that in, in time, we can't just like have a hologram of an actor or like a fucking Android that looks like an actor. I'm like, right. okay, pay, use this instead of the actual actor. Do you know why he wasn't in the movie? I can't remember. I just know that he sued. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess we'll see if anything comes of it. You know, maybe... I don't think so. With a movie this big. Yeah. yeah. They definitely could have afforded Hugo Weaving. I thought it was. He probably just didn't. Well, maybe he just turned it down. He probably turned it down. What am I missing from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I don't know why Red Skull is the fucking Grim Reaper now? The he's just the first he, captain all he happened. said all he said was that like i tried to get it and oh did he say it i just i gathered that like basically he tried to fucking use the stone and it just had really bad repercussions and fucking like now he said that i'm cursed to show people how to use the stone i don't remember what happened to, to him in the end of the first captain America. Me neither. but he's the so old, that's the only one he's in so <laughs> i'm sure they did something i remember him like Dissolving or something, some yeah, cheesy I thought he died. death. But... Um, he's cool though in the movie. Good for Ross Markham. Wow, that's crazy. A lot of deaths. A lot of deaths. Oh, yeah. Um, do you guys have yeah, a favorite part? Because this we could go on forever. Do you have a favorite right. part? Favorite Was it that uh, Hulk v Thanos? Part of the whole movie. I mean, that is definitely uh, a contestant for one of my favorite scenes. I don't know if there's any one scene. There were so many fist pump moments, though. Yeah. Like, if you're totally into it. I would say overall, like my favorite part scenes. of the movie is Thanos. He is my favorite part. Like, no yeah. one scene, yeah. but he's my favorite part of the movie. Which is it's that. weird that he takes that place over Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man is fucking my shit. Rest in peace. <laughs> kind of like how Killmonger was the best part of um, Black Panther. Yeah. Um, did you have a favorite... Um, I would probably have to just not to piggyback on Evan, but Thanos is probably my favorite part. But specifically the ending and how Thanos won, I think that I know that it's not going to last because that's not how comic book things work. But I like the bad guy winning. I like a catastrophic event happening. I like felt like a red wedding. I, would, wedding I thing. wish that yeah, and I would want I want to see what the world how the world deals with it. Yeah, you know I want to see like cars, cars crashing, these people are dead, and I liked seeing main characters dying. Yeah. You know, like main characters like shit you know what am I? what's happening and then i like they lose i liked the thanos won and it looked like he wasn't going to win you know thor had that fucking axe in his chest and Storm pushed it in thor. deeper and he's basically like yeah oh, you should have fucking killed me dude boom yeah done you're done what do you, you know? think um how are they gonna solve it like what do you think is gonna happen i mean because we have neither of us have read through the infinity war graphic right. novel right. so we're not going off at anything but just if I base it simply on superhero knowledge yeah, yeah. and precedent, it's going to be either time travel, time travel, um, d- d- uh, dimension work, yeah, yeah. like they're going to travel to a different dimension or bring Earth into another dimension, or they will bring like a Deus Ex Machina. They'll bring in uh, like Captain a godlike Marvel. character that will reverse it. Captain yeah. Marvel could be. I, I, I think it's actually Miss Marvel. I fucked up. I forgot to correct myself. Miss Marvel. That's what she's called. Yeah. Really. Got her powers from some accident that involved Captain Marvel. Oh, well, there, there is a Captain, Captain Marvel in Marvel. But basically, but Captain Marvel those are, that's that's Whoa. how it's gonna happen, I think. I because think that's they're gonna somehow have to go to an alternate dimension and get, get another Finian another stones? time, time stone, stone from a different dimension, oh. and then yeah. you'll use that to turn back time. There you go. Damn, this Damn, just turned into the new God, God of War. War. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really hope they don't do. That's not a spoiler. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. no. It just they they do crazy shit like that. Um, I I hope it's not a time travel thing, where at some point in the second part they go back in time to a scene in the first Avengers, and then yeah. they just because that just feels like a scapegoat. I really it fucking, is, and they probably will. It's like I don't know. It's it's. It feels bad because I like. I mean, you obviously don't want the the superheroes to stay dead because you know. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Bring oh, Black, well, Panther Black Panther back, back and that's and about that's it. it. Everyone, Everyone else can fucking eat it. Eat a big bag of fucking 
Infinity Stones. I feel Stones. like there needs to be some repercussion, though. You know, there's got to be some. Someone's got to fucking stay dead. I mean, there was. Oh yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. There's got to be. It can't just oh, be. We'll stay dead. Well, the oh, people, this movie, movie is pointless, pointless because now, now we reversed it and everyone is back alive. It's like there's got to be some. There's got to be consequence. Well, there is yeah. a lot of people who die in the like before the snap. Yeah. Loki, Gamora, um, fucking someone else. I liked Gamora's death. I didn't like how oblivious Gamora was until the last second because I feel like as the audience, since you knew it immediately, she should probably yeah. know it immediately. Right. Right. Definitely love. Am I, really, am I supposed to believe that she's not even fucking like I'm smarter than her? <laughs> What's wrong? Well, she's, she's not, not very... very. No, I guess she is portrayed as intelligent. She's at least very tactical. Tactical. Yeah, she's you know? more of a warrior like than from, like a tactician. I feel like yeah, and I. Or... But I guess maybe. No, you're right. That's. Hmm. I know what you're saying. Um, what was your favorite part? Oh, Let's I was so track. fucking when um. This is so dorky and like comic booky, but when they're making the new um axe or whatever for Thor, yeah, and Groot like puts it together oh, and yeah. then chops his arm off and that that's the was handle. Dope. I was like, that is so comic booky, but so dope. Final thoughts on Infinity War? Um, two screws way up. I thought it was really enjoyable. Um, well, one screw. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Infinity screws. Um, uh, I would say that it was I, but I always think that movies are better in theaters. So I'd have to I have to rewatch it when it's out of theaters to give like a to I guess to give because like I loved Man of Steel when I saw it in theaters and then I saw it again and I was like yeah, I saw yeah. it for what it was. Yeah. But so far in my mindset right now, I would I would suggest go seeing it. That's a good but, point about the Man of Steel. That was on a rewatch. That was way worse. Yeah. I think um, your thoughts. It's worth seeing it. It's like my girlfriend was saying. Marvel movies are always better in the theater anyways like on the big screen if you're experience it, you might as well experience it to its fullest potential or there's a lot a... of really cool action scenes and that's why i watch them personally because i love the fight scenes that's why i like comic books and the jokes weren't bad no thor ragnarok had a lot of swing and misses yeah well like i felt a lot. like and this one I've had heard only that, that one was just trying so hard so to be like a comedy so there's gonna be i imagine i haven't watched it yet but just a lot of uh a lot of jokes that work well. With they sacrificed things. plot points for humor a yeah. lot in that. And that was to the point where you just don't give a shit at the end. Yeah, I would um, say Infinity War. I'm going to hold my final judgment until the second part, but I think the first part just like is, Thanos. is definitely <laughs> <laughs> worth seeing. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it three screws up. Cool. All right, guys. Um, that's the show. We might touch on this later next. Yeah, just a so little bit. Yeah. We're kind of short. Tune Maybe talk time. about talk spoilers about, uh, of uh, Quiet Place and yeah, and more. Maybe do the second half of our yeah. Uh, yeah. of our Wind River. Yep. yep. Infinity so. War spoilers continued because I do have a couple more things, and then Wind River spoilers next episode, and then Quiet Place. Yeah, the this is for you, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you next time, screwies. Remember to screw in. Lube up your screws. That's that's right. Uh, thanks for screwing in, but now time it's time to screw off. Time to lube. Charge your drills. Screw out. <laughs>